background and context. Air pollution laws are about particles and gases, particles in a lump, gases, nitrogen dioxide is the one that we particularly worry about. And I'd just like to highlight one thing there, which is that in July this year, King's College London published the first estimates for mortality from nitrogen dioxide. This is absolutely stunning. Historical perspective, I'd just like to make two points here. The first is that in 1952, we had the Great Smog, which was about short-term exposure to visible air pollution. Now we have long-term exposure to invisible air pollution. The World Health Assembly discussed air pollution, debated it for the very first time at its 68th meeting in May this year. They have asked the World Health Organization to produce an air quality plan for their meeting next May. In a sense, uh, I think we're back where we thought we were 60 years ago. Air pollution affects absolutely everyone. Just because it's not short-term visible exposure, people think it's respiratory, it's not. There is really a huge lack of understanding about this. I've got two slides on the focus on CO2. Just look at the second last sentence there. This is something that came out in an excellent article by John Vidal, one of the Guardian articles. Basically, this is where a senior civil servant ad admitted to him that they decided to kill people through diesel pollution, thinking that it was worth the CO2 savings. It's absolutely unbelievable some of the things that were done on, based on this myopic focus on just one part of one atmosphere. Give you another example of a stupid policy. This is London just before the Olympics. You can see that's quite a heavy particle smog or particle episode. The mayor's approach to that just before the Olympics uh, was to use something which I dubbed the pollution suppressor, and you'll see why. That's basically it. You're using this thing three times a day, spraying calcium magnesium acetate on the road surface. He managed to reduce PM10 levels by up to 49% just in front of the monitor on the Olympic route network. <laughs> now, I had to hunt this quite hard because they made it very hard for me to find this thing. I tracked it down through freedom of information requests to being used at certain times of the day or night. I spent one night standing by the Marlebon Road Monitor, which is the one officially used to report legal breaches and warn of smog episodes. Spent the whole evening there, nothing happened. And then I saw it as I was going home at about two in the morning, sort of zooming like a rabbit down Park Lane. I went back the following night and was a bit luckier. Within about 10 minutes, this thing appeared, flashing lights coming down the road. So I took a video of it spraying calcium magnesium acetate just before the Olympics in front of the main London monitor. And then I hailed a cab and said, follow those flashing lights. And that was really great fun, I can tell you. They really did not like it when I tweeted a photo of that. You can see here it had no effect. That's the uh, beginning of next year. All it does is hide the results and the legal breaches. Some lessons. I really do think we should focus on one atmosphere, not uh, forget indoor air quality, of course. It's very easy to think that offsetting's the answer. You know, we'll plant trees or we'll put up green walls or something like that. But really, we need to tackle this problem at its source.